here from Shores Wellness Solutions, the Natural Health and Wellness Center. And we are here this beautiful Saturday. We actually have sunshine here in Michigan today. And so we're going to be talking about cholesterol drugs today. Cholesterol drugs? That's right. Are they medical miracle or medical myth? Hmm. What do you think? All right. So let's get right into this. Cholesterol, first off, is defined as a high molecular weight sterile, right? It's a subgroup of steroids. So cholesterol is a steroid or something similar to that. Cholesterol is not a fat, <coughs> excuse me. So that's important to know, right? So cholesterol has many functions, and these are things that we are definitely not told on a regular basis. Cholesterol is an important component of the cell membranes. What does that mean? Every cell in our body has a membrane, or think of it like the skin to the cell, and that's made of a, phospho, a phospholipid. That phospholipid is made from, you got it, cholesterol. So that includes what we call organelle membranes inside the cell. So we have the cell membrane, right? The thing that wraps up the cell, otherwise we'd just be gelatinous masses. That's covered with cholesterol in this phospholipid membrane. And then inside the cell, what's called organelles, also have phospholipid membranes. And so it's so important. The body contains billions, and this is old, body contains about 60 trillion cells, okay? The right proportion of phospholipids, fatty acids, and cholesterol in cell membranes allow them to be flexible while holding their shape. You know, you look at a balloon, we blow up a balloon, right? And as we blow up this balloon, it's a certain shape depending on what that balloon starts as or what it was manufactured for. Okay, it's the molecules of that latex, that rubbery latex stuff on the balloon that allows it to hold its shape as opposed to just kind of float around and, sh and shape shift. Our bodies are the same way. Our cells are held together by cholesterol, and they are, that's what holds the shape of the cells so that um, the cholesterol, uh, so that the cells have integrity to it. There we go. Cholesterol is used by the body as raw material for the healing process. Say what? Healing process. Oh, back to the cells, right? We have this coronavirus thing going. And watch, we're going to put out a couple videos later this weekend on it and next week. But think about cellular integrity. If you don't have enough cholesterol and cellular integrity, how do you protect yourself from viruses? Not just corona, but all viruses. You really don't. This is the reason, back to cholesterol used by in the healing process, it's the reason injured areas in the arteries, as in arthrosclerosis, have cholesterol along with several other components like calcium and collagen in the scar tissue that's formed inside the wound. So when we have any kind of wound, right, anything, any injury that's going on, we need to increase cholesterol and send it to that area of the body. Hmm, wonder how that happens. More is to come. And so anytime there's inflammation in the body, an injury, we're going to have elevated cholesterol because what's cholesterol doing? It's protecting us from that injury or that wound. All right. Cholesterol is found in large amounts in the brain tissue where it's needed for normal brain function. Whoa. We need cholesterol for normal brain function? Yeah. If you want to stay away from dementia and Alzheimer's, um, things like that, memory loss, we need, need cholesterol. Right? Research has shown that cholesterol in eggs is helpful to people whose memory is declining, which means if you know someone that's having memory issues, what do you want to do? Get them eating eggs, right? Three, four a day at least. Oh, but my cholesterol will go up. No, it won't. Your cholesterol won't go up with three or four eggs a day. Four dozen eggs a day, yes. Okay, and that's been proven. Not three or four eggs in a day. And have the whole egg, not just the white. I mean, come on, that's ridiculous. The whole egg, all the nutrients are in the egg yolk. That's what you want to have, right? Cholesterol is found in large amounts. Let's see. Cholesterol is off, often elevates as part of a protective immune response to chronic infection. Hmm. Looking at chronic stuff now, right? We talked just a slide before about chronic inflammation, how cholesterol is going to rise. Now in chronic infection, what's going to happen? Cholesterol is going to rise. Why? It's protecting us. It's a protective mechanism, okay? And so it's so important to make sure we're not screwing that up using pharmaceuticals. Next up, infants need plenty of cholesterol for proper brain development, and cholesterol is normally found in large amounts in human breast milk. This stuff that you buy in the store, these formulas that you buy, just not the same. Oh, it's kind of like breast milk. No, it's not. 
It isn't. Breast milk is like breast milk. And so I even have squirrels outside the window watching this right now. This is awesome. They're all sitting there watching. Anyway, so back to infants. Infants need cholesterol. Where are they going to get that? They're going to get that through their food source, one of which is breast milk. And so it's important that they get that. Infant formulas usually contain little to no cholesterol because of widespread misunderstanding about cholesterol. Because think about this now, right? Back since the 1960s, we've been saying, ooh, cholesterol is bad, fats are bad. They're not. The human body, the diet that we have should be no less than 30% fat. And if you've been deficient in fats, a low fat diet, less than 20%, you're causing injury to yourself and insult. And so what does that mean? That means over time, we're gonna to have to get you back on a high fat diet, 40, 50, sometimes 60% fat to get the fats back up in the body to get the body to heal. And that also means that we're gonna to have to make sure you digest the fats, because you can't just eat it, because what if you eat it and you don't digest it? Well, then you're not absorbing it. So that's so important to know as well, All right? Your adrenal and gonadal hormones are made from cholesterol. So we have this organ in our body, it's called the liver. The liver sits right below the right ribs here, largest organ in the body, okay? So what does the liver do? We know it does over 550 things. We estimate the liver does about 1,400 different things in the body, one of which is it makes cholesterol. Our liver makes about 85 to 90% of our cholesterol every day. 85 to 90%, that's a lot. Then why are they clamoring about dietary cholesterol? Well, because I don't think the medical community really understands cholesterol, right? So we should eat about 10 to 15% of the cholesterol we need, and the liver makes the rest if it's functioning properly, and cholesterol levels will be well balanced. And we'll get to those in answers in a few moments about like what's really a good cholesterol. But when cholesterol is made, it's gonna do a few things. It's gonna get out into the skin, and out into the skin, what happens? When we go outside, we get sun exposure, we make vitamin D. If we have low cholesterol or we're screwing it up, taking some type of toxin, AKA a pharmaceutical product to lower it, we're not gonna get as much vitamin D. Cholesterol also is used to make hormones in our body. Hmm. Well, if we don't get enough or if we artificially lower cholesterol, how can we produce the proper amount of hormones? You can't. Cholesterol is used for brain function, brain repair. Without it, you got it. How can we have proper brain function repair? Cholesterol is also used for joint lubrication. There it goes again, we need that cholesterol. And cholesterol is a protective mechanism. It helps to protect us from infection and inflammation. Again, if we lower it artificially, what happens? We lose that protective mechanism against the inflammation and against um, the infection. And cholesterol wraps all of our uh, cells. And if we're de uh, decreasing it artificially, what happens to those phospholipid membranes? All right, they go away. And as those are deficient, or as we're deficient in cholesterol, right, and as we're stripping it out using drugs, what happens to the sheaths around our nerves? See, our nerves, as they come down through our body, the larger ones are wrapped in sheaths. Why? So they, they can uh, maintain that energy flow, right? Think of it as a, um, a highway to allow nerve function, nerve flow down, uh, uh, down through the nerves by having a sheath around it. Well, if we don't get enough cholesterol, the sheaths start to decay as well. Now, what happens to nerve flow? It slows down, it's not gonna be as good. So we know that adrenal and uh, gonadal hormones are made from cholesterol. The adrenal ones are your stress handling hormones, 51 total, but stress. These are the stress handling energy producing and reproductive hormones. That's why serum cholesterol normally elevates with prolonged stress. So you take somebody that has prolonged stress throughout the lifetime, what's gonna happen with their cholesterol levels? It's gonna come up. We don't need to artificially lower that with drugs. What we need to do is figure out what's the stress, What's the inflammatory process behind that? And correct that. That's what's the important aspect, okay? Cholesterol is vital for proper nerve function. Three quarters, three quarters of the myelin sheath, the myelin membrane, right, is made from fat. And of that, nearly one quarter is made from cholesterol. So if 25% of our myelin sheaths, those sheaths around our nerves, are made from cholesterol, and we're lowering it, how do we expect to have normal nerve function? So let's think about this a minute. In our aging population, we see a lot of neuropathies. Neuropathies are when the nerves aren't working correctly and they're getting altered sensations. That's what neuropathies are. 
Why would they be getting that? Well, they're not getting proper nerve flow from the brain down the spinal cord, out the spinal cord, down the nerves to the arms and legs. Now you develop neuropathies. Why do you think this is occurring in such a wide uh, range, such a vast amount? Because we're using drugs to artificially lower our cholesterol. We don't have enough cholesterol, and the myelin sheaths can't be repaired. They're being stripped away from uh, with some of their fats, and they're not going to work properly. No? Hmm. Now, I won't give the experiment. I was going to say, take some wires, strip off the coating, the, the, the plastic coating on the outside, and see how well that electronic device will work for you, whether it's your car, your house. could probably even start a fire. Why? Because the coating's missing to protect it. Same thing in the body. Okay? It's so important to know and understand this. Uh, we already said vitamin D made in the skin because of cholesterol. Cholesterol is needed in large amounts in the skin where it's vital for skin health and strength. Skin health and strength. Our skin, right, is a protective layer on our bodies. Doesn't allow stuff to get in. We are covered with microbes. I don't care how often you shower and bathe. We're covered with microbes. Stop using that stupid hand sanitizer stuff. Okay, yes, I said that. People are, oh, you need that. No, you don't. Soap and water. Don't use uh, antibacterial soap. Use regular bacterial soap, or regular soaps, okay? Um, use... Uh, there's a great one from doTERRA, On Guard, foaming hand wash. Why? The essential oils in there will kill the pathogens, but not the good organisms. And it'll also help to moisturize the skin or put a protective layer of essential oils on the skin that helps it be even more vitally strong. And so it's so important that our skin is protected. And if we don't have enough cholesterol, the skin is not as protective as it should be. And if you're worried about infection and stuff, you want your skin to be healthy and strong as well. Cholesterol is... Uh, converted into bile salts in the liver, uh, which are needed to break down and emulsify fats. So if we're stripping cholesterol out of our body artificially, how can we produce enough bile to digest our foods? And if we're not digesting our foods, then how are we able to absorb these things and be healthy? Can't happen. And so it's so important for that. Brain synapses, right? Brain function. Vital connections between nerve cells in the brain and elsewhere are made almost, almost entirely of cholesterol. Hmm. What do you think happens to brain function, synapse, if we decrease cholesterol in our system? Okay, these are things we need to start to ponder and think. And we need to ask our medical providers who are going to prescribe these toxins to us these questions. Okay, to perform its many important functions in the body, cholesterol is transported from the liver to the cells, to the tissues, and to glands on low-density lipoproteins, LDLs. Whoa, Dr. Wendell, isn't, aren't those bad cholesterol? Is that the, there's no such thing as bad cholesterol. You've been lied to. You've been duped. You've been misled. LDLs are part of the lipid panel. It's not cholesterol. It's a low-density lipoprotein. So think about this. You go to the grocery store. You buy bags of groceries, right? Let's just say two. And they're all packaged, so you need two bags, not one, to put the groceries in. Low density, why? The bags are packed in all that packaging, right? So you bring that home. That's what, like the low density lipoprotein. The liver makes the LDLs. The LDLs take cholesterol from our liver and brings it out to the body. It's gonna bring it to the brain, to the skin, to the cells to the different glandular organs. It's gonna take it everywhere in the body. That's what LDLs do, let's bring this out. And if we have any kind of infection or inflammation, LDLs are gonna rise a little bit, sometimes a lot, and bring more cholesterol out to the body so the body can be what? Protected, okay? Then we get, oh, here we go, got it. Reverse cholesterol transport is done through high density lipoproteins. HDLs transport used cholesterol from the cells and tissues to the liver to be recycled or um, excreted. So L HDLs, high density lipoproteins, that's the trash under your sink. You go to the grocery stores for your LDLs, right? Things packaged in bags, right? You need big bags to carry that stuff because everything's in packaging. After you use your groceries, or whatever it is, and you, you take the packaging and stuff, and you stuff it in the trash, it's compacted. And so the same amount of stuff can fit in one bag. That's high density. So after cholesterol has been used in the body, HDLs take the used cholesterol, the damaged cholesterol, and bring it back to the liver to be 
repaired and recycled or excreted, out it goes. And so it's not good or bad, these things have function. Now, if we have long-term infection, long-term inflammation, we're gonna see a rise of LDLs. And the longer that's there, we're gonna then start to see a decrease of HDLs. That's not a message to your medical provider telling you you need drugs. That's a message to your medical provider that you have a long-standing inflammation or infection that needs to be addressed. Why aren't they addressing that? Beats me, I don't know. We do in our office. All right, there you go. So reported side effects of statin and cholesterol-lowering drugs. Every drug has a side effect, everyone. If you're ever told, oh, try this drug, there are no side effects, you're being lied to. I would change doctors if they're lying to you, okay? Chronic aches and pains, especially in muscles and joints. We see that all the time. Patients come in with aches and pains, crying, oh my gosh, I've had this for six weeks or whatever. No matter what we do, it doesn't go away. And we ask the question because it might not have been revealed to us. Have you got a statin? Yes, I am. Try stopping it for two weeks. Now, legally, I can't tell you to stop your prescription medication. But if it were me and I had aches and pains after starting a statin drug, I'd stop it for two weeks and see if that pain went away. And if the answer is yes, got it, I would stop that statin if I were you. Why? Because it's stripping away the phospholipid membrane and it's creating pain. Okay, progressive cognition, right? And memory, our brains aren't working as well. Problems, confusion, our memory problems, confusion, mood disorders, depression, dementia. All those things, yeah, check out those drugs that you're taking and look at the side effects. You'd be amazed if you saw what it was. Um, impaired wound healing. Okay, we see this a lot in the elderly, particularly ones that have been on long-term statin use. Their wound healing slows down. It can barely heal. Why? You don't have the protective cholesterol in there to help with the healing process. It's so important. Numbness, tingling, swelling, and weakness. We see this again. People using statins, you know, question is why? Well, because it lowers cholesterol. But is a lower cholesterol really good? Hmm. Food for thought. Impaired immune function. A weakened immune system. Listen, let's get to the media hype, right? Coronavirus. Oh my gosh, this thing is deadly. Yeah, a little bit. I'm not going to deny that. What is it? On average right now, 25 people per month are dying from the coronavirus. Yeah, but what about the 80 thousand people that die every month just in the United States from heart disease. Huh. What causes heart disease? Inflammation. What causes inflammation? We know a white trash diet. Why don't we give up white trash? See how that goes. It also boosts the immune function as well and you'll be less likely to get coronavirus. Hmm. So we're making this big news scare about 25 people per month. I'm not downplaying the death of people. Don't take it that way. What I'm saying is why aren't we concerned about the 80,000 people that die every month due to heart disease, which most of it can be prevented if you got on a good whole foods diet and if you stop taking drugs and if you stop doing procedures to kill the heart. It makes a big difference, All right? So impaired immune function. A statin will lower your cholesterol, cause a decreased immune system function and make you more susceptible to illness, okay? Ask your docs, if they tell you no, they either don't understand the side effects or how a statin works or they're lying to you, okay? So it's important to know that. Increased fatigue, decreased stress handling ability, impotence, these are all side effects of statins. Demyelination disorders such as ALS and MS, these are side effects of demyelination which is due to lower cholesterol, which most likely is due to taking a statin drug. Liver problems, we know statins directly affect liver function. We know this, and it doesn't make it better, it makes them function worse. So it's so important to make sure that we are protecting liver function. Okay, simple th things we can look at in blood tests. Shortness of breath, right? How do you know if you have shortness of breath? You walk up a flight of stairs and you gotta stop for a second to take a breath. Shouldn't have to do that, okay? We say, oh, well, I'm 60. It shouldn't matter, it really shouldn't. But what's going on? If you're taking a statin, you're having trouble with that oxygen exchange, okay? If you have an increased incident of heart failure, but I thought statins are supposed to protect my heart. Not at all. Cholesterol is protecting your heart, not the statin. So somewhere along the line, somebody says, oh wait, this was back in the 1960s, right? Um, the 1960s, three 
Yale scient um, researchers, let me get it right, researchers were paid significantly to say that fats lead to heart disease, carbs and sugar don't. Hmm. By 77, we saw the, the food in the United States change to the food pyramid, huh, which is very carb laden, which is very inflammatory, which is very anti cholesterol, which is what? Causing a lot of sickness and inflammatory processes in the United States. And so we're eating ourselves to death, creating heart failure by listening to people who were influenced and paid off as opposed to, and it's true, you can see it in, in the history of uh, medicine. But they're being paid off and um, delivering erroneous information to a public, and as a public, we're believing it in the United States. The rest of the world looks at us and go, what are they doing? I had a little jersey there, right? And let's see. Increased susceptibility to degenerative processes. Yes, that's inflammation. And so when cholesterol is lowered, we're creating more problems in the body. So we really need to watch what we're doing. All right? Most of these commonly reported issues are routinely denied by prescribing practitioners and their pharmaceutical industry. Patients who are reporting these side effects are often told things like, everybody has aches and pains. Or, what do you expect? You're getting old. I hate that. Well, you know you're getting old. Why does that knee hurt? Old age. I've had patients say that. They sit on my table, we do a consultation, and they tell me about right knee pain. I said, okay, why does it hurt? And they look at me and they say, old age. My question immediately is, how old's the other knee? What do you mean? Well, if that one hurts from old age, when did you get that one replaced? Well, I never had it replaced. So they're the same age. Yes, they are. Then why doesn't that one hurt if that one hurts from old age? Good question. Now let's figure out what's really going on. Old age is not a diagnosis. Don't ever accept that from your provider. If they tell you, well, you know, you're getting old, uh -huh. doesn't count, okay? Make them really do their job. All right, the body, especially the liver, makes most of the cholesterol needed in a day. About 50% of cholesterol in food is absorbed. Remember, 10 to 15% of what we need, we eat, okay? But only about 50% is absorbed. Cholesterol is found only in animal tissues where it is a component of the membranes. Remember, phospholipid membranes, okay? And because it's not possible for humans to eat enough cholesterol-containing foods to supply our daily needs, the practice of avoiding foods with cholesterol is not an effective way to control serum cholesterol. Again, how many eggs do you need to eat in a day? Right, about four dozen to raise it. So not eating enough cholesterol simply makes the body work harder to produce even more. And now throw in a statin that causes liver dysfunction, and now your body's really straining to produce cholesterol. You get all these disease processes going around, but ooh, right? Big Pharma gets to say, look at that. We're going to create inflammatory processes, and now we're looking at six, seven, eight different medications to give you just because you're taking a statin. All right. Now, let's get to some crunch time. These are some questions that we need to ask. Let's get them all up there. One more, and bam. These are questions that we need to ask, okay, our medical providers, all right? Why is my cholesterol high? Okay, what would make it high? Hmm, good question. Is it due to my diet? What's an optimal blood cholesterol level? All right, so first off, what would make cholesterol elevate? Well, diet for one, inflammation and infection. And so inflammation can be an injury or it can be dietary related if you're eating a lot of white trash. Because if you're eating white trash, that's inflammatory in the body, that's gonna cause elevated cholesterol levels. Don't believe me? Go have your blood taken, see where your cholesterol level is. Give up white trash for 30 days and go have your cholesterol taken again. I guarantee you it will be lower, okay? Is it due to diet? Probably in the United States, yes, because most people eat white trash, okay? What's an optimal blood cholesterol level? Ah, this is a great one. Optimal blood cholesterol level is 165 to 330. That's right, 165 to 330, okay? We'll continue that in a second. Years 1984, 97, and 2013. In 1984, we lowered a good cholesterol to 240 because we discovered cholesterol-lowering drugs. In 1997, it got lowered to today's standard of 200. Why? Created more sick people, got to sell more drugs. And then in 2013, they lowered it to 170. Yep, nobody knows that yet, but that's what happened. And then I see it on a few blood tests that come back from certain labs, not all of them. But what happened then? We created 52 million sick people overnight, just in the United States back then, okay? And so that's what those years were significant. Your doctors should know this, and if not, 
maybe they shouldn't be giving you the drugs, right? So optimal blood cholesterol level. 225 is the average American blood cholesterol level. That's, that's pretty good, okay? As we age, we want that to creep up. We want it over 200, all right? It should be. Why? Because it's protective as we age, and so it's so important not to lower it, all right? Huh. We'll get that in a second. What happens when my cholesterol level's too low or too high? If it's too low, you're more susceptible to inflammatory processes and cancers, things like that. If it's too high, yeah, maybe heart disease, but it's gotta be above 330. When we look at people that die of heart disease, the majority of them have what? Normal blood cholesterol, well, what's medically normal. And I see on labs coming back, normal cholesterol right now, you know, zero to 200, zero to 170. Question to ask your doctor. If my cholesterol level is zero, can I still be alive? I know the answer to that. Ask your medical provider, okay? What happens when my cholesterol level is too low or too high? I went over that. Where is cholesterol made? By now you should know in the liver. What is HDL? Is that good? And what are LDLs? Is that bad? HDL, high density lipoproteins, bring used cholesterol back to the liver. LDLs take brand new or recycled cholesterol that's re uh, processed and ready to go and bring it out to the body, okay, to protect you. What do they do? HDLs, I, we just went over that. Neither are good. Does inflammation play an importance to that? Yeah, it does. If we have an inflammatory process, cholesterol levels should rise. You have to let them rise because it's protecting us. And if you don't let them rise, oh man, you can create some serious, serious issues with that. All right, so that's our cholesterol information that we have for you today. I hope you learned something. This is on Facebook Live. It's going to be saved there, I hope. No, it will be. So you can always go back and review it, share it with a friend. We are here at Shores Wellness Solutions, the Natural Health and Wellness Center. Make sure if you're watching this that you like us on Facebook so you can get more information about us. And remember, here at Shores Wellness Solutions, we want to be your inspiration for healthy living. Have a great day.